recently I had a dear brother in the Lord send me a Bible. <laughs> said he was going to send me a, an older Bible, and uh, I love older Bibles, but man, this is this is quite a Bible here. It's uh, pretty heavy, pretty thick. I certainly wouldn't want to carry this thing to uh, church or anything or to a Bible study. <laughs> Um, but I want to show you a little bit more detail of this thing. This is probably one of the very first parallel Bibles printed. This is a King James Bible and a revised version. Okay, pretty interesting. Let me show you what the thing looks like. Well, here it is. This is the front of this big, massive Bible. You can see how little this uh, Bible is here, a regular sized Bible, compared to this big monster and there's the thickness of this one and <laughs> there's the thickness of that thing hold them up for comparison a little bit thicker pretty big Bible I just I love these old books I'll tell you what this thing as I said is an 1892 parallel Bible probably one of the very first parallel Bibles ever made I'm gonna have to be very gentle with this thing um, let me Stick this thing over here. And you can see, just uh, this was probably a very expensive Bible back in its day. Let me zoom in here. I want you to see some of the stuff. Um, it's unfortunate. I love these old books, but they have a lot of lies in here. A lot of attacks on the King James Bible. They were trying to tell people that the revised version of Westcott and Hort was an updated King James and it was not. It says here in 1609 the Old Testament was made or had also made its appearance at Dewey, the Jesuit Bible. The Remish New Testament as the version printed at Reims is called was prepared at the English Roman Catholic College then established at that place and afterwards at Dewey by Gregory Martin a distinguished Hebrew and Greek scholar. Okay now look at this admission down here but from this version the Jesuit Bible, unfamiliar as many of its words are, our translators obtained some of their happiest expressions. Now I said in my Real Bible Version issue exposed that the new versions are just Jesuit updatings of the Dewey Reams. Right there, they're admitting it. Okay, I'll show you here. They're not saying from this version, meaning the King James Bible, you won't see the King James Bible in this section right here. They're talking about the Jesuit Dewey Reims. And they're saying our translators obtained some of their happiest expressions from the Dewey Reims. Right there you have it. Down here, but in process of time, numerous errors were discovered in it, speaking of the authorized version, and new manuscripts of the original came to light. Okay, here's when you have the whole Alexandrian cult getting started, telling you that, oh, we found new manuscripts of the original, and it's coming to light. Kind of like the Masonic thing there. It's kind of interesting. What is it that you most desire? Light. You know, more light. Still more light. All that stuff. But you see there, here's where it's getting started. We found new manuscripts, and errors are discovered in the authorized version. I'm going to show you some of these supposed errors here as we continue. I've got to be very gentle. Normally, I don't care about uh, you know versions or whatever these old ones if they're new versions, but this one has a King James Bible, so I'll be a little bit respectful. The authorized and revised versions. Okay. Um, here you have the revisers preface. And over here, way over, um, in some words of very frequent occurrence, the authorized version being either inadequate or inconsistent and sometimes misleading. <laughs> yeah, and look at their, look at their uh, example given here. For instance, the tabernacle of the congregation has been everywhere changed to the tent of meeting. Now, look at that. Bunch of stupidity here. When you think of tabernacle... When you, I mean, if you go up to somebody on the street and say, what's a tabernacle of the congregation? They're going to picture in their minds 
something like this, you know, the Jewish tabernacle. But if you say, how about the uh, tent of meeting? When people hear tent, this is the kind of image that comes into their mind. They don't think about a Jewish tabernacle. They think about a tent, you know, tent of meeting. That's what we do on July 4th weekend or something. You know, Labor Day or something like that. It's ridiculous. How about this one here? Another error in the King James that these nuts, you know, professed. The word peoples was nowhere used by King James translators in the Old Testament. And then in the New Testament, it occurs only twice. The effect of this was to leave the rendering of numerous passages inadequate or obscure or even positively misleading. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Come on. Positively misleading because we don't have the word peoples? Give me a break. Pretty ridiculous. You can see the mind of these new version uh, perverts. Here we have another good one. The Hebrew word Asherah, which is uniformly and wrongly rendered grove in the authorized version, most probably denotes the wooden symbol of a goddess. Nonsense. Absolute, total nonsense. Pagans have always put idols into groves of trees. Okay? Probably the most famous or infamous example of this is the Bohemian Grove out in California. Monte Rio, California. It's near the little town of Monte Rio. Okay, here you see some pictures of it, All right? And these pagans, these world leaders go out there and they commit human sacrifices in effigy, they say, unto this giant owl thing and it's a big satanic ceremony and a bunch of sodomy going out, going out there and everything. They've been doing it for well over 100 years, dating back into the 1800s. Here you see pictures of that, okay? Very well established that pagans worship in groves. They consider the tree to be a sacred symbol that it connects Mother Earth with Father Sky. Okay, it's just ridiculous to say that grove is, is somehow misleading, it's wrong and things, and it's, it should be a wooden symbol of a goddess. That's nonsense. And a lot of the new versions, by the way, will change grove. The NIV says a share a pole, which is just nutty nonsense. I mean, just ridiculous. And by the way, here's a little video. Uh, there's a Jesuit center in our area here and I drove through there and the one time and I got a little bit of video you can see here it says Grove they have a Grove at the Jesuit Center hmm interesting but now let's look at some more things here Genesis chapter 1 it says here in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void. Here's the true one, the King James Bible. Without form, this one says waste and void. See a little evolution coming in there? Doesn't say waste, it says without form. See the problem that creates? And then look at this one. Here you have the first day, one day. There you go. It wasn't the first day, Definitive article, singular word, the first day. That can only be referring to the first day. This one is one day. Well, one day could be any day. It'd be one day among a million years or a billion years. See, the compromise to evolution. The second day, second day. Uh, the th third day, a third day. The fourth day, a fourth day. And then you go down there, the fifth day, a fifth day. So, there you see that again. Here we have Genesis chapter 3, when sin came into the world, Satan's uh, deceit to Eve. And it says here, um, And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Look at this one any tree of the garden. See the change there? That's a big difference. Every tree versus any tree. Okay? Satan asked Eve a question. Are you not allowed to eat of every tree of the garden? Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? This one says any tree. Well, obviously, 
they were allowed to eat of certain trees. But Satan is trying to get Eve to admit to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that they're not allowed to eat of every tree. So, again, well, just a weird change. Down here he says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Godhood is something that Satan has offered to man for centuries, for thousands of years, and they usually bite on it. But not too many people are dumb enough to think that they could become capital G God. But look over here. Ye shall be as God. Footnote, or gods. <laughs> yeah. Why would they change the text? Satan didn't say, you can be God. He said, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Again, another change. Okay, here we have Matthew chapter 27. Let's see if I can find it there. X, X, V, two eyes. 27, and we'll go down here to verse uh, 55. This thing's heavy to move around, I'll tell you. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 54. Truly this was the Son of God. Can you see a definitive article before a singular reference there? Can only be referring to one. Okay. The centurion realizes who God is or who Jesus was, and he says, Truly, this was the Son of God. What does the uh, RV say? Truly, this was the Son of God. Oh, good, that's wonderful, no problem. Yeah, except for the fact that there's a little footnote there. I'll have to zoom in so you can see it. Or a son of God. You see the kind of mentality these people had, these men had that messed with, you know, the King James Bible? Westcott and Hort. Maybe one of them wrote that. Maybe that's one of their notes. Jesus was just a son of God. Well, I am a son of God, but I'm not the son of God. Why are they demoting Jesus? I'll show you more on that here in just a minute or two. Okay. Ugh, I mean, like getting a workout moving this thing around. Ooh. Okay, here we have Mark. And you're going to see this the whole way through the New Testament. Uh, the beginning of Gospel of Jesus, of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me move this thing out of the way. The Son of God. Some ancient authorities omit the Son of God. Referring to their corrupt uh, Alexandrian type manuscripts. Okay, over here, Mark chapter 9. Have it here somewhere. Okay, 10 it says there, but of course that's because 10 starts on there. Verse 44 and 46 are taken out. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Footnote. Okay. There they have it removed. That's when it got started. Right here. The late 1800s is when this Alexandrian move got started. Again, down here, Mark chapter uh, 15. It says here, verse 39, Truly this man was the Son of God. They do it again, the Son of God, number 10 there. A little footnote, you go over, or a Son of God. See, it, they attack it in more than one place. So you have... You know, if it was just one place, I'd say, well, maybe they made a mistake. Two places, nope. You have a concerted effort here to attack, undermine the deity of Jesus Christ. All right, go to the next one. Here we have Romans, Romans chapter... X, 
uh, IV, in other words, 14. So it starts down there, verse four, or chapter 14. But here we have chapter 13, verse 9. Paul lists the Ten Commandments that a Christian is to keep. And you can see there, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and it goes down through. And what's the old revised version do? Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet. Where did uh, thou shalt not bear false witness go? Why did they remove it? Check your modern version. Most of them do too. Like the NIV. Hmm. A command not to lie and they remove it. I wonder why that would be. Here you have 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. The preaching is foolishness. When you go out and you preach on the street or when you preach in a church or whatever, you look like a fool to the lost world. But it's the preaching of the cross. Okay? It's what the man is doing there that looks foolish. Look at what this says. For the word of the cross is to them that are perishing foolishness. No, it's not. And most new versions will mess around with this verse. They'll say it's the word or the message or whatever. No, it's the preaching. Okay? I look foolish as a preacher to most of the lost people out there, but why on earth would you call the word of God, the word of the cross, why would you call it foolishness? Okay? No, it's the preaching that's foolishness. And let me show you something else here very quickly. Get this big monster out of the way. You can see that that thing is pretty old, so it, it has a tendency to rub off on your fingers. I'll have to do some cleanup here. <laughs> okay, here I have an American Standard Version. This is the uh, one that came out a few years after the revised version. This one came out in 1901. Here you can see it, American Standard Version. And here we have John chapter 9. I'll zoom back in here so you can see this. John chapter 9. And uh, move that thing a little bit farther. And we'll zoom in here to this one word or this one little side note here. Look at the mentality of these people that translated The Greek word denotes an act of reverence, whether paid to a creature as here or to the Creator. Now, where is the number three there? Uh, let's see. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Jesus said, it's talking about Jesus. Okay, in the context here, this man worshipped Jesus. Your footnote there in the American Standard Version says that Jesus was a creature and not the Creator. Hmm. So there you have the mentality of the Alexandrians. Okay? The men that created the American Standard Version thought Jesus was just a creature and not the Creator. And this is the great grandfather, this, and specifically this, the revised version of 1881 and I think Old Testament was 1884 when they came out with that. This, These are the grandparents of all the new versions that are out there. This is what started the great apostasy uh, that has come about as a result of people forsaking the King James Bible. That's where it came from. Okay. As with all my videos, I always like to end the similar way, and that is to advise people to return to the King James Bible. This is the greatest book right here. Man has attempted to rewrite it and to change it and to pervert it. Okay, and you trace it back, it traces right back to the Roman Catholic Church, the enemies of Bible-believing Christians. Okay, shed the blood of the martyrs and saints of Jesus Christ. Don't go to them for your Bible. All right. King James Bible, don't waste time with this stuff. So that's it. Thank you.